Hello fantastic people, I hope you're doing great. Today we'll be creating day and night cycle. I'm starting with this very simple scene. I have a character that can walk, multiple trees and simple UI consisting of just two elements, text mesh pro and a simple image. I start by creating new script and calling it word time. I start by creating a serialized field of type float. I call it day length. It will store the information about how long the in-game day is. Then to represent the current time we'll be using a field of type timespan. This beautiful .NET struct allows us to very conveniently work with any type of time intervals. What I mean by that is that we won't have to worry about implementation details like looping time, switching between hours and minutes and this type of stuff. Then we'll need an information about how long one in-game minute is. The calculation will be pretty simple. We need to divide the total day length by the number of minutes in a day, which is 1440. Of course, we don't want to have any type of magic numbers in our code, so I'm going to create a simple class. Its name will be word time constants. I'm removing the unnecessary methods and the extension of the mono behavior. Because I'm going to store there only static information, I'm going to make the class static as well. If you would like to learn more about what it means, you can check this tutorial out. Then I'm going to add public constant of type integer. Its name will be minutes in day and the value 1440. I'm also going to remove the unnecessary using statement. Now inside of our word time script, I'm going to replace the number with our constant. Now I'm going to create a simple coroutine that will handle changing time. Of course, I make it return the i enumerator and finally I name it at minute. In its first line, I'm already using a little bit of magic of the time span. To our current time, I add a period of one minute. I create it using the time spans method from minutes. Before I add another minute, I want to wait one in-game minute. I'm going to do that using the wait for seconds. And then at the end of our coroutine, I want to start it once again. This will create intentional infinite loop. If you are looking for a small challenge, you could, for example, implement a mechanism to stop and start that loop. I'm sure you will be able to handle that. Now inside of our start method, I'm going to start our coroutine. This will initiate the time passing logic. Now I go back to Unity Editor. Before I started to record this tutorial, I created simple empty object and called it systems. I add to it our word time script. I give the day length of 15 seconds. Currently, we don't have any way to visualize the passage of time. So I'm going to create another script and call it word time display. This will be the script that will make our clock UI work. We have to make sure that the game object that we attach the script to has the TMP text component. We can do that using the require component attribute. Then we have to know which word time we want to display. To store that information, I'm going to create private serialized field of type world time. Then we'll also need a reference to our text mesh pro text. And then we grab that reference and store it inside of our awake method. Currently, our word time is not able to notify any other script that the time has changed. Let's fix that. I go back to our word time script and in its first line I create new public event. I use the generic type event handler. If you and the events are not the best friends, you should definitely check this tutorial out. Now inside of our add minute coroutine, just after we change the time, I invoke the newly created event. Because of the generic type I used, I have to provide two parameters, the sender object, which is this, and of course the time span, which in my case will be the current time. Awesome. Now in the awake method of our word time display, I can subscribe to that event. I'm going to do that using the onward time changed method, which doesn't exist yet. I'm going to use the power of my ID to generate it. Small adjustment of the parameter name, and now I simply have to change the text of our text mesh pro. I convert the time span to string using to string method. And to make the value look nicer, I simply format it using the parameter. To learn about different formatting options, you should definitely check the time spans documentation. Because we subscribed to the event, we also have to unsubscribe it. We can do it in the onDestroy method. 
Now in the Unity editor, I place our word time display script on the UI component containing the text. To fill the word time reference, I drag and drop the system's game object. If we start the game now, we'll see our clock is working. But that's just the beginning of the fun. If we want to make it proper day and night cycle, we should probably do something about the lighting in the scene. Let's create a new script and give it a beautiful name, Word Light. Let's start by doing a little bit of cleanup and creating a field of type Light 2D. In order for it to work, we of course have to have the right using statement. Then let's add the require component attribute, just to make sure the light is actually on the same object. After that, let's add two more private fields. Let's make both of them serialized, one for the word time and one for the gradient. The idea behind the script will be pretty simple. In this gradient field, we'll store different light colors at different times of the day. When the time will change, we'll check what color should be applied now and we'll assign it to our light 2D. Traditionally, we'll grab and store the reference to our light inside of the awake method. Then we'll subscribe to our word time changed event. Of course, for that we'll need new method. I'm going to call mine on word time changed. Once again, I'm going to generate it using the magic of my IDE. We can get any color from the gradient by providing it a number between 0 and 1. That means that we need to convert our time to a percent of the day. Our current time field represents the time from starting of the script. That means that even if we display only the hours and minutes, it still contains information about the time that passed, like days and months. This allows you to build much more than just simple day and night cycle on top of that system, but it also means we have to be clever with our calculation of the percent of the day. So instead of doing simply timespan.total minutes, which will convert the total time to the minutes that passed, divided by the number of minutes in a day, we need to get the reminder from the division between the total minutes and the minutes in a day, and then finally divide that by the minutes in day. It's really much simpler than it sounds. Once we have our method ready, inside of the onward time changed, we can change the color of the light to gradient.evaluate. And as the parameter, we simply provide the percent of the day, calculated from the new time that has been received from the event. Then, because we subscribe to the event, we of course have to remember about unsubscribing it. Once again, we can do it in onDestroy method. Now we go back to Unity, and to our global light 2D, we add our new script. As the reference for the word time, we use our systems object. And then we have to set the colors on the gradient. Just remember that the night is not purely black, it's rather dark, cold blue or even purple. When the sun rises and goes down, when it's in the lowest position, the sky is almost red or deep orange. Then it goes slowly into a little bit desaturated orange and then finally the light becomes very bright, almost white. Setting up the gradient correctly will take a little bit of time and practice. Let's just watch one full day-night cycle to see if everything works correctly. Fantastic! We definitely would like to do something at certain times of the day, right? Like make the character go to a certain place, play certain sounds, spawn enemies, or simply change the icon. We'll need for that another script. I'm going to call it Word Time Watcher. Yes, yes, I know, I called it the wrong way around, but I'm going to fix it in a moment. I start by creating serialized private field of time word time. Then I'm going to do something a little bit weird. Inside of my time word watcher class, I'm going to create another one and call it schedule. Because I will need to serialize it, I'm going to mark it with the serializable attribute. I'm going to create three public fields. Two to represent the time of the day and then one to store a unity event with the action that should happen at that time. You may be wondering why I'm using hour and minute here instead of using time span, and the answer is pretty simple. In order to show the time span, we would have to write custom inspector, or at least property drawer, and this would be a little bit time consuming. 
Now I'm going to create a serialized list in which we'll store our schedules. Now in the start method I'm going to subscribe to the event of our word time. I'm going to do that using check schedule method, which we'll implement now. Once we receive new time, we'll look inside the schedule list if there's any that should be executed at that particular time. The first or default method will either return schedule, of course if it's found, or null. Then if the schedule exists, and if there's any action to be executed, we simply call the invoke method. And then, of course, because we subscribe to the event, we have to also unsubscribe it. And you see, at this very moment I realized that the name of the class is wrong. I'm fixing it and also applying the renaming to the file. Awesome. Now back to Unity Editor. Now let's use our magical script to change the icon at certain times of the day. First I add our script to the UI image. I set the word time reference and add two positions to our list. I change the first one to be executed at 6 am. As the action I set the change sprite on the image. As the sprite I select this beautiful not creepy at all sun. And then I want the second action to be executed at 7 pm. The action will be exactly the same, just with different sprite. This time we'll use this very positive and cute moon. As our time starts at midnight, let's also use it for our default sprite. If you found this tutorial useful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like and comment this video, and most importantly, have a fantastic day, love you and bye bye.